That is why we never give up. Though our bodies are dying, our spirits are being renewed every day. For our present troubles are small and won't last very long. Yet they produce for us a glory that vastly outweighs them and will not last forever. So don't look at the troubles we can see now. Rather, we fix our gaze, our eyes, on things that cannot be seen. For the things we see now will soon be gone. But the things we cannot see will last forever. I'm going to speak a few moments from the subject, your condition is not your conclusion. Your condition is not your conclusion. Here the Apostle Paul is encouraging this church at Corinth, and he was writing to them, he started out in the beginning of the chapter saying not to give up. He was speaking to them and encouraging them that we don't use tricks and all types of methods to try to get win you over for Christ. He said, but we live an honest life before you. We, we speak the truth in the Lord. And we're not here trying to do all kinds of trickery and do all kinds of false prophecies to make you follow God. He said, our life is an example of who we are in the Lord. And Paul said, even though we are going through all of this, we are facing persecution. And we are facing trials. We are trying to get people over to the Lord's side. And, but even in the midst of that, we are facing troubles every day. And it seems like our life is always on the line. But Paul said, God put something in us to give us that endurance to make it. Paul said that there was a light in us. He said that God put this treasure in vessels. And other words that he said that God entrusted the light in fragile, frail men and women to deliver the word of God. And Paul turned around and said, but you're troubled on every side. Paul said there's trouble everywhere. Seems like we're pressed on every side by troubles. Paul said it seems like every day we get up we got to toil and, and fuss and fight. We got to go through so much of stuff to stay afloat. But he said God has never let us down. and tell 
accepting that your condition is not your conclusion. This is not the end of the matter. God, you just know I'm doing tests right now. I remember as a little boy, every night and then they were splashing on the TV. This is a temporary interruption. And for the next 60 seconds, we're going to be conducting a test. And then everything just stopped. Sometimes in life, everything just stops. And it seems like you're all alone. But after a while, the 60 seconds was up. And they went back to regular programming. God said, I'm going to get ready to get you back to regular programming. When you used to pray, you're going to start back praying. When you used to serve, you're going to start back serving. When you used to be faithful, you're going to start back being faithful. Your condition is not your conclusion. Keep calm. This is only a test. It's only a test. God, get ready to bring you out. You just got to wait a little bit. You just got to go through for a little bit. Every now and then, God has to push us in the fire. And one thing I love about God, that even though he allows us to go in the fire, when we come out, we should be looking like him. Because trouble will make you pray. Our situations will make you cry out to God. Trouble will make you humble yourself. And God wants us to look like him. And sometimes trouble has to make us look like him. Because when everything is going good, we don't want to pray. When everything is lined up, we don't want to study. When everything is right, we don't have time for God. But let God touch your family. Let God touch your money. Let God touch that that you love. If I knock on your door, I'll find you on your knees. Your condition is not your conclusion. You may be in the midst of a lot of stuff going on in your life. Lord, I bless you. But you got to understand that the Apostle James said to count it all joy. When you're falling the diverse temptation, knowing that the trying of your faith, that it worth your patience. Ah, uh, then someone wrote in the book of Ecclesiastes, the ending of a thing is better than the beginning thereof. Oh, I bless the name of the Lord. The apostle Paul said, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time, they are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. I just come to tell you to keep calm. He understands where you are. He would have never let you go through it if he didn't think you could handle it. He's just not that kind of a God that he would put more on you than you can bear. If you can carry it this long, that should give you evidence that you can handle it. But the Apostle Peter said, Thank you, not strange. Concerning the fiery trials that come to try you as though something strange has happened unto you. But Peter said, just like James said, that you got to rejoice. It's time to rejoice. Oh, you don't cry too many days now. You don't get sad too many days now. It's time to praise God while you in it, while you're going through it, while you're being loved, while you're being persecuted.
think focusing on the trouble. Come on, but then we're focusing on the trouble. And we wonder why our joy is being ripped apart every day. Because we're so focused on the negative stuff. We're so focused on the situation that we're in that we are not in expectancy for our deliverance. And when you stay focused on your trouble, you will never see your deliverance. When you stay focused on your situation, you will never see better days ahead. Because you're trapped in a box. And in that box is nothing but negative stuff. And I'm lying then. I know we get a little discouraged. But over and over again, I found out that when I start thinking on the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, I get a little bit happier. My situation may not change. But my mindset changes. Yeah. 
be given the ammunition. So he works with all that negative stuff. He works with that doubt and fear and worry and complaining. It fuels him to do what he needs to do. And he presents a picture before us that God is not fair and that God is not the God that we think he is. And if he was so good and merciful, why are you going through what you're going through? The Bible says, as Christ has suffered in the flesh, arm yourself likewise. We're not going to escape it. I don't care how many tongues you know. I don't care how many scriptures you know. I don't care how long you've been saved. I don't care how many, how many saved friends you got. This thing is going to be with you. There's no escape from it. Amen. How many visions you got? Or God give you or stuff you can see in the spirit. Prophets have trouble. Bishops have trouble. Apostles have trouble. Jesus had troubles. This is not the conclusion of it. He said, hey, look at the things that we see now. He said, well, I, what you see now, this thing is just temporary. What you're going through right now is a temporary interruption into your everyday living. But God knows how to come right in and get things right back on track. But we've got to focus on God. We got to know his character. When you know God's character, a lot of this stuff we can deal with. When we know the character of God. Sometimes we don't really know who God is, so we don't know how things. That's why we paint all these pictures. All this stuff out of defeat and out of their minds because we don't understand that God's got the last say. The man don't have the last say, and the devil definitely don't have the last say in, the, in your current condition. God got it all in control, and he's already working it out for your good. So lift up your head, so your gates. Be lifted up, you everlasting doors. You can lift your head up. The righteous will face many trials, but God will deliver us out of all. He will. Say he will. Say he might, he will. And there are some things that we just got to go through. There's going to be some things that's not going to be comfortable. Amen. There's going to be some tears that we're going to shed that we cry every day. My God. Don't hold your head down every day. Yes. Yes. Remember in whom you serve. Yes. Remember the God of your salvation. Yes. That God, the same God that brought you to this place, is the same God that's going to carry you to your next destination. Yes. Yes. And in the midst of our troubles, we got to remember that God is our refuge and he's our strength. He is a very present help in trouble. So your condition is not your conclusion. This is not the end of the battle for you. Don't you dare quit now. Don't give up now. Don't throw in the towel. Don't back up. Don't start down. But trust God. Trust him right by you and feel it while it's messed up, while it's bad. Change your way of thinking. And start speaking your deliverance. I don't know when it's coming, but it's coming. God, when your time for me to come out of what I'm going to come, I just want to be in the will of God. I want to be in the place that God, when I come out, I can say that I held, I kept the faith. Today, if you need prayer, if you're in a bad situation, seem like you're troubled on every side. Concerning my situation, Jeremiah told the people that God had, he know the thoughts that he think towards you. He said the thoughts of peace and not of evil to bring you into your expected end. Everybody in here wants to be delivered. That's the expectation. Wants to be free, wants to be healed, wants to be delivered. I hope that's everybody's desire. God said, I'm going to bring you into that expected end. I have great plans for your life. Don't let the troubles that you're in right now cause you 
to prolong your deliverance. This is not the end of the matter. It's not over yet. Touch our minds even right now, God. You know where we are. You know what we're going through, oh God. You know the trials and the troubles that we're facing and that we're enduring even right now. And Lord, we came to this altar for help. We came for your divine intervention in our lives. Touch our minds that we won't thank God the way we've been thinking. You told us to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Lord, help us to renew our mind, oh God. Lord, help us to wait on you. You said that we'll renew our strength if we wait on you. Yes, Lord. And God, we give you praise right now. Yes, God, even though we're going through right now, God, we trust you, God. Give us strength, God, to wait on you. Give us the strength to endure every trial, every situation, every sickness, every pain, every heartache. Give us the strength to endure, God. Because, Lord, we know you're going to deliver us, God. We know you're going to heal us, God. We know that you're going to restore us. We know that you're going to make us over again. We know that, God. You've already said it in your word, God. But, God, because of life, sometimes we take our eyes off your promises. But, Lord, now we come now to be renewed in the spirit of God. In the name of Jesus. God, help us not to give up. Don't give us the mind to want to quit and give up, God, but help us to hang on and see what the end is going to be. Help us to trust you when you don't see you, God. God, we give you praise right now. Touch that one right now, God, that don't understand the situation they're going through. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, give them strength. Let the spirit of peace rest upon us, oh, God, in the name of Jesus. God, we want to tell you thank you for everything that you've done, God. Thank you for what you brought us from, God. Thank you for what you brought us to. God, we give you praise right now. Lord, we didn't come on our own. We didn't do it on our own, but it was you that brought us over, God.